I'm Chosen Architect, and welcome back to some more FTB Genesis. Now today, we are tasked with growing some crops in an interesting way, and well, I want to go outside of the clear zone, and that is going to require a little bit of work. One of the first things, though, that I am going to need is I'm going to need a way to get up top of this building and I want to gain access to a little bit of this food. This is a, an immediate access to food as it's a part of the building, but well, I'm going to take advantage of what resources I have and I can rebuild later on. So yes, grabbing as much of this as I possibly can is going to help us in that journey. Now I feel really bad tearing down some of this house uh, because there is a little bit of a story behind this hut. Um, and it says, I am Dr. Alaria Thorne. And, uh, and the story of my greenhouse is one of persistence, innovation, and the subtle art of the coaxing new life from the earth. This is interesting because there is a nice little story here that I recommend checking out and reading through because it is quite a sad little story here about this whole area and how the researcher had gone through here and raised up this area to be what it is. And that's where we're in. Um, so how exactly are we going to progress now that we've made it this far? So this is important. We definitely need food and food is going to help us sustain ourselves, And uh, we're also gonna need some inventory. But I do want to explain, as I mentioned last episode, uh, I did try my best to explain how this whole crop stick process works for growing these crops. And as you can see, I have expanded just a little bit. Now, what you want to do is you want to leave these crops grown and you do want to grab more of them, um, but you want to leave them grown and you want to use double crop sticks on the middle section. You can see I have a bunch of different crops. None of them are the ones I actually need, however, just yet. Um, but you can see this right here is sugarcane. I don't need sugarcane here. So when I see stuff like that, when it's fully grown, I just remove it and apply a new crop stick. This right here, we have fully grown cactus. This is sugarcane. So I'm going to remove that. It looks like we have fully grown mushrooms. And the thing you want to do is notice when I do punch a fully grown crop, we get the crop bag, the seed bag. And that's pretty important because that's how you're able to move the crops around. And, uh, so that's going to be something that you're going to see constantly. Well, it looks like uh, we got ourselves some berries and we have some other things as well that have grown up. Now, the main thing I am after is the stick reed and it's what's going to allow us to make rubber. And that is going to allow us to make a suit as it mentioned in the quest to be able to venture out and to gain new materials. Now, sticky resin comes from that stick reed and stick reed has a small chance to be bred right here with uh, some sugar cane. So that's what we're currently working on getting. And it's a 1% chance, almost a 2% chance. It's a very small percent chance. So anytime we see any crop, that's not necessarily the crop we're after. Once it's fully grown, then we probably want to grab it. For example, here is bamboo. And we want to continue on our merry way of letting these things breed and create new crops. However, if you go a very long time and you haven't seen the stick reed pop up into existence in the world. Well, there is a way that we can bypass the RNG and we can just trade in a bunch of sugar cane and a bamboo, uh, one of the sweet berries or uh, one of the cactus, which are also pretty rare to get. And uh, we do have sweet berries over here. So I can go ahead and right click to harvest these sweet berries. And believe it or not, sweet berries are pretty nice because you can actually just place them like normal into the world and they will grow. Um, so that also works, but you do get quite a bit from these. They still hurt you when they're fully grown. And these right here are glow berries, which are going to be really nice. These are a great food. Uh, but yes, we can actually use this with a ton of sugar cane from just harvesting all of this. And we can just immediately get some sticky resin. Um, and you end up getting a 25, 25, 25 stick reeds here, which are incredibly powerful. Now I do want to show this off. So I just grabbed myself some cactus and I want to make more of the cactus seeds that we just got from this setup. And to do that, we place down our cactus and it's going to grow, but we need to double crop sticks our area here. And each one of these crop sticks that grow here 
will end up creating a duplicate of this seed. So we should end up getting ourselves cactus growing here, 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 and here. And that is how we're going to increase the yield of all of our crops. We're gonna be able to make more of them overall, but we gotta get them started. So while all of this is taking a little bit of time, there is some things that we can be working on while this stuff is growing. Now, some of the things that we need to get done as well, we should probably harvest some more of these hives so that way we have more wood to make more crop sticks. And we also might want to go out of our way and gather some logs and potentially use some of this wood to make a way to take some of these crops and turn them into bone meal. Now, the quest did say that outside we could potentially farm some resources and some things that we could get from these trees are saplings of all different kinds. It might take a little bit to harvest these, but as you see right here, there is a chance of getting a sapling and there's birch logs. There's even, I believe, dark oak. Yes, there's even dark oak in here. So you can get access to a ton of different saplings from just breaking leaves. Now, thankfully with our saplings and with our own body, we can grow more trees. Uh, consider this method a little bit odd, but um, we can, yeah, uh, just, it's exactly what you think it is. Uh, to grow trees. Now you can also get wood and trees from these crop sticks. And these are very powerful as once you get them high enough level, they'll give you a ton of wood. So you're definitely going to want to grab them as soon as you can. Now, once you collect enough logs, you get bone mill, and this is going to complete the bone mill task, which allows you to get started with a few things. Um, so how we're gonna keep maintaining bone mill, which can be used as a fertilizer, right? Well, we can actually use a hopper and just all of the resources that we're getting from these crops, from the sugar cane that we're not gonna need right now, well, we can just hopper it in, but we're gonna need flint. So I'm gonna have to go back up to the surface and we are gonna need to make some flint shears, which require a full flint block. And I'm gonna show you a quick method for getting as much flint as you could ever need. Now to pull off this trick, we're gonna have to go outside and grab a little bit of gravel. So there is some gravel over here. And yes, you do get flint, but really we only need like one or two pieces of gravel in order to pull this off. Now back inside of our little hut, all we're going to need is some wood and we should be good to go. Um, so what I'm going to end up crafting after I craft up some logs is a cutting board. And this cutting board is so nice because if we go ahead and use a uh, basically a shovel and we put the gravel in our offhand, we can place it on the cutting board and use the shovel. Uh, you don't notice anything just yet, but if we continue to do this, there's a chance that we will get flint basically in exchange for durability. And if you notice, I now have four flint. And if I keep repeating this process using up the durability on my shovel, I will get more and more flint. And so, yes, you can just hold down right click or you can click as much as you want, but eventually you will get more flint and it doesn't consume the gravel. So you should be able to get by with one or two gravel easily from this process. Here we go. I just got five, six, and I just continue to do this process. Now we're still missing one thing, one huge component uh, to be able to get the thing we need. Now we were given a little bit of hemp seeds, but I think we need to go looking for some seeds. It told me in the quest that there are some containers and this is a seed vault. So there should be seeds in the agricultural wing. Ha, huh, and indeed there are, there are barrels and inside the barrels contain these items. And if you hold down shift, you should be able to see the items that are actually inside of each of these barrels. And there's even experience and there's oak saplings and all kinds of different things that you can find in here. This is definitely gonna be a hoarding thing. I'm gonna have to go through all of these chests and take every item out of here. Oh boy, and there's multiple levels. Now some of these barrels even contain Enderman essence. Ooh, potential early Ender Pearl? I think so. I'm trying to find a very specific seed, and I'm not seeing it just yet, that should provide us with access to very easy string. Aha, they did store some for us, and that is the flax seed. This is probably one of the most important seeds to me right now, and the flax is going to allow me to grow string. So let's go ahead and plant some of this stuff. This stuff is super important and I'm going to want to bone meal it. Yes. So the more of these I have, the more I can plant and the more string overall we're gonna end up getting. And thankfully we get given some bone meal to make this a little bit easier. 
So now that we have the flax, we can turn that directly into string and we can use it to make more wool, even though wool is strung out all over the, uh, the entire base here. But I should now have everything I need to make the flint. And this is going to give me two hoppers. Yes, and this is going to allow us to automate more bone meal production. That's well, gonna be super good. So with the flint shears, we now have them, uh, or actually we need to craft them, right? So flint shears. Looks like we're just missing some sticks. Perfect. And there we go. So that is done. And then we just need to simply shear a leaf. And I don't know if it matters. Uh, there's birch, birch, dark oak, <laughs> oak. There we go. And now we have also oak, which you can use this method, by the way, to also farm bone meal. But now that we have this, we can make ourselves a composter and get our vanilla bone meal method up and running. So one composter coming right up. And uh, where do I want to put this? For now, I think I'm going to include it into the side here. And I'm just going to have the hopper go here, composter on top. And then I'm going to place a hopper on top of here. And let's use one of our barrels we just gathered. And we can go ahead and place a barrel on top. And now all of our excess goods well, we can just filter it into the composter. Now, I think I got super lucky because one of my crops did end up turning into stick reed, which is very, very cool. So what I want to do is actually break some of the crops that are around this because I want to change up a few things. Uh, now that we know that stick reed grows here and we got it growing there, I'm going to change up everything around this and I want to try and duplicate the seeds if at all possible. So that's why I'm breaking all of these things. So we make sure that we have some room. So I want to add some of these here, double crop sticks. And so this should give us some more room. And then I went ahead and got a hydration cell. Now the way to get a hydration cell is you need to go underneath the synthetic acquisitions and you just need to submit some power to the screen for the hydration cell. And uh, now that we have this, we can then hydrate our crops by right clicking. So for example, if I click this, now you see the humidity went up and the water went up. And some crops are gonna require this. This one, I just wanna make sure that I have as much in there as possible. And so now we should be able to use a very special item that I was saving for this specific task. And that is the overgrowth fertilizer. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting because this crop should, once we activate this, start growing very fast. Um, and as you see, this has already duplicated the stick reed. But what's gonna end up happening is this overgrowth fertilizer is going to deplete this crop entirely. So after a while, it shouldn't, uh, it probably won't grow anymore um, in this spot and it'll be hard to get things to grow back. So let's use this. And now when we click, as you see, it's just going to continue to produce the sticky resin that we're going to need. If you harvest it too fast, by the way, before it gets the orange nodules, it'll just give you regular sugar cane. Um, but you need to wait for the orange uh, nodules to show up. And there we go. Now we can farm tons of sticky resin uh, for about five minutes, because that's how long that fertilizer lasts. And that's why I was like, you definitely need to keep this for this particular task, because this is a great way to farm a bunch of this early on. And rubber is going to be super useful to us. Now, if you waited a really long time and you didn't actually get any stick, the stick read, well, you can actually go into the quests and do the RNG Jesus take the wheel quest. And this will give you the actual sticky resin and a repeatable stick read. So if you happen to place some stick reads down and they're not growing, well, you can repeat the quest and get yourself some more and potentially find a good place to place it. But keep in mind that hydration cell is pretty important. So now that we have a ton of sticky resin, we need to get this fired up and we need to start making rubber as this is how we're going to actually make the hazmat suit and is what's going to lead us outdoors. So now that we've completed the selective breeding sort of section, it does say that the rest of this is optional if you want to continue breeding tons of things. But what we need to do now is go towards a dangerous path. And so if we head over to the dangerous path section, we now need to suit up and get ready for an adventure. So we should now have everything to craft out the hazmat suit. Let's go ahead and do this. We should have all of the rubber that we're going to need for this. We'll make the boots, squeaky, squeaky. And then we're gonna make our leggings and we're gonna make the chest piece. And thankfully in the quest, it gives us the helmet. 
So now we have the scuba helmet, the rubber boots, the hazmat suit, and we get a waystone and we get a dosimeter. Uh, this thing is supposed to help us detect how much radiation is in the area. And when we're all suited up, <laughs> we look a mighty schnazzy. Now, before we head out on an adventure and hopefully find and locate some new resources, I'm going to want to make sure that I have my jar completely filled with water to take with me because I don't want to be drinking dirty water. God knows what's only in that water outside. Now, we have detected several sources of iron around the Genesis Vault. We suspect that these will be remnants of an ancient communication network. These towers can be torn down with, and their bars repurposed into raw uh, iron crafting components. Additionally, the redstone torches can be broken down into redstone with a simple shape craft. The powered rails may have some value on the I'm a drone network as well. Make sure you've gotten your I'm a drone tablet from the synthetic acquisitions chapter. Now armed with that knowledge, we should be ready to go. I do want to bring a bed with me and I think we can go ahead and set this to our base of operations, which is currently what this is. And now we should be able to travel out, making sure to check periodically <laughs> if we have radiation nearby, but we should be good with our suit. And uh, yeah, I would not suggest traveling outside of this bubble without having this suit. Now, these must be the towers that they were talking about, a way for us to repurpose and obtain iron. Interesting. And there's water. Thankfully, we have a scuba helmet, so we should be good here. And I'm pretty sure we could potentially drink this water, but it does look awfully brown. And that would be pretty gross. So it appears we're going to have to harvest some of this iron and work our way up to the top here to obtain some of those torches that I see, as it mentioned in the quest. So this shouldn't be too difficult. And once we get ourselves four iron bars and four of these torches, well, we should get quite a bit of resources to get us started. Looks like these torches are going to be kind of a challenge to get to. But now that we're here, we should be able to pop these off the corners and that will get us the torches we need. So perfect. That should be everything. And now we get a bunch of stuff. We get some mechanical components, 64 iron and some redstone to get us started. Now it does mention the surface scan indicated that there's some or that there seems to be a rather large deposit of copper uh, materials near your location. And it gives us the coordinates that we need to potentially find this stuff. And so it's at negative 23375, negative 120. And to find that, well, we need to open up our map and enable the map. By default for you, it should be enabled, but I'm going to go ahead and enable my map. And now I can see those coordinates and I should be able to locate where they're at. I can only imagine what the prior generation did to the, make this land so barren. My goodness. It seems I have located a structure off in the distance. Interesting. This must be remnants of the, the lost civilization that was here. And, well, there shouldn't be normal life still here, that is. It appears we have a notice board, and we have a notice. Nothing here but monsters. Okay. <laughs> so, somebody at some point had ventured into here and realized there's nothing here but monsters. But is that just somebody that was trying to send me away from here because it's super powerful? We'll have to come back and explore later. For now, I want to make it to our copper location. And we're getting pretty close. And I think this is the copper location right here. It looks like the building is made up of copper. So this is probably our source that we're going to get copper from. Aha. And we get some stuff. Nameless trinket. Sometimes you are your own enemy. 50% chance to damage the mob that hurts you with its own damage. A Uno reverse card. That is actually quite funny. I wonder where that uh, that completes. And then we should be able to put this in our trinket slot. I wonder if we can just right click to equip it. We can. Oh, that'll be pretty neat. And so this should be where we get our copper. Let's go ahead and clean it up real quick. All of this copper. I'm going to use up some of the durability on our axe. And yes, I'm going to take all of this because in the quest, it even suggests 
Hint, copper stairs can also be smelted down to give even more ingots. So the more copper, the better. And I'm gonna try my best to take all that I can from this. Ah, <laughs> nothing like the taste of copper. Now, after obtaining some copper, we do get a few more bottles. That's nice. And some insulated copper cable. And then it leads into the fiery realm, which we haven't explored just yet and probably won't get into much today. But I do want to maybe explore a little bit in here. I know we were kind of warned not to, but I feel like it might be worth a little bit of exploration. There are bookshelves and it seems like there are quite a few things lurking about. It does seem like we should be fine for the most part in some of these buildings. Oh, nice. There's definitely some torches here. I want to grab as many torches as I can. And it also mentioned something about powered rails having a use. So I probably want to grab those. Even though I don't know if they're, they're more useful to just have to use or, or useful to trade. It did say that I could trade them. Oh, yes. There's definitely more torches here. That is so worth grabbing. It's starting to get dark and I don't know if I should stay here after dark. That sounds like a pretty bad thing to do. What could possibly be lurking down here? Oh, oh there's a brewing stand and an anvil. Oh, the oh, but that's not good. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> there's a skeleton. I was not prepared for that. Okay. So yeah, maybe I should find my way out of here before things start to happen. And this right here is exactly why I brought a bed so I could sleep through the night. Now, I wonder if it would be worth potentially attacking the spider that's up here. I have very limited gear, but we do get some rewards for actually killing some of the mobs. And so this particular mob, oh, there's a skelly spawner and a spider spawner up here. This is super dangerous for me to even be thinking about doing this. But at least I got that one kill and we can walk away from this safely. Now, there are a few other things that would be really nice to kill. A zombie and a creeper, which do unlock these abilities to be... Uh, to, the ability for us to be able to pull these out and to craft more gunpowder. Is it worth it, though? I think it might be. Yes, there are creepers right here. And if I let them out... Oh, it's too many. That's too many. Okay, we just observed the creeper. But can we get a kill on it? I don't know if we have to actually kill it or not. We did. Okay, so we got the creeper kill. So we should be good there. The only thing we're missing is just a normal, a normal zombie kill. So I think with that, I'm just going to start to head back. I feel like we'll be able to eventually find a zombie outside of this building. Ooh, what major changes here? Now that we are back and we have iron, we can now make a bucket. Which, wow, what an endeavor it is just to be able to say, I can make a bucket. Now that we have this iron, we can actually complete a few quest lines. All we have to do is smelt one of these iron ingots down, and we should be able to complete one of our quest lines under the getting started, and we should have just about everything done. Now, it did mention that we should probably claim our chunks, which is kind of important. I did actually claim my chunks, so we should be fine. And that's just to prevent things from, well, blowing up this area. Or mining through it, I guess. I don't really know. But there we go. There's our refine. And this is going to allow us to start making cool stuff. Ah, we now have access to some simple machinery. And we're going to be able to start producing some of this stuff here soon. That's, of course, going to be the goal. But there's still a few things that I want to do before we jump any further and start to dabble into the depths of this world. And uh, that is that I want to actually go down underneath the synthetic acquisitions and I want to get my prime delivery. <laughs> I want my Amadrone tablet. This is going to allow us to essentially trade with the network. We're going to be able to trade things, and I want to show you how that's done. Now it's time to tap into the vault yet again and try and get something new. So now we can tap into this, and I can go ahead and fuel it up until it has completed the objective. We should get ourselves a tablet. And just like that, we now have our prime delivery. And so we can go ahead and take this. Now this does use pressure, but we can actually repressurize it 
by submitting our tablet back in and giving it a little bit of power and it will give us back one that has been repressurized. And the th same thing goes for these batteries that we're going to be using eventually. Um, and so how do we use this? Well, we're going to need a storage. Now, once you have your storage, all you have to do is shift right click to tell the storage where to trade from. And uh, we just need something to trade with, right? So I did grab some powered rails and that's apparently something we can trade is power rails or some redstone. So if we go ahead and we right click, it'll say items out of cell um, and it says orders in basket. We should be able to submit orders by putting the items inside the barrel. And as you see, if you go ahead and right click, it will increase the amount you can order. And then once you've placed the max order, which for example, us is three, we can hit place order and the drone should pop into existence and complete our trade for us. Just like that. <laughs> There's our Amadrone drone delivery drone. Yep. It takes it. And then we should get back a new drone that should deposit our items. And there it goes. And now inside, for this thing launches off, <laughs> we should now have redstone in exchange for some powered rails. That is so cool. Now we should effectively have the means to craft some very basic machines. And this is where this pack is going to start to blossom. But all of that is going to have to wait until next episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Now, these videos do take quite a bit of time to put together and make. So if you wouldn't mind, I would appreciate it. And guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to... Nurin. I think I said that right. Nurin, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I thank you too, too much, way, way too much for all of the tremendous support so far and uh, looking forward to this journey as it's only going to get more and more interesting as we go on. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.